In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of the risen Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Father. We call to mind our sins as we seek the Lord's pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer, and a man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. <coughs> But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood and walked around and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him. Sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth his judgments prevail. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, 
which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them named Cleopas said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women of, from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way, and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We just heard this wonderful story from the writer of Luke of the journey to Emmaus. And this is the second of three major journeys in the New Testament. We have just completed the first journey in a ritual of dying to self in prayer and fasting and almsgiving during the season of Lent. Now in these first eight days of the Easter season, this octave, we recall the multiple resurrection appearances as seen in our gospel stories as we journey towards Pentecost, where we will hear 
how the early Christians, and in particularly St. Paul, realized Jesus not just in themselves or in a small group, but in all the nations of the world. For me in our reading today, the key word is recognition. The disciples do not recognize Jesus as he begins to walk with them. They don't even recognize him as he interprets all that refers to him in all the scriptures. And yet they're interested. They invite him to stay with them. And then during a meal, which is a celebration of solidarity and identification with, indicating close relationship and communion, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. <clears throat> I think this reading should sound familiar to all of us. He took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. This is the language of the feeding of the 5,000 and the 4,000, and certainly the Last Supper. In this octave of Easter, we're called to recognize the risen Jesus in our midst. And this is not just about Jesus' real presence in the Eucharist. It's also about Jesus' real presence in each one of us. Through the sacraments, and especially through the Eucharist, we are made sacramental, an outward sign of Christ offered to the community to be grace. Just as these disciples couldn't wait until morning and had to return to Jerusalem at once to share Christ with the other disciples, we are sent from the table of the Lord to witness Jesus for others. We're sent to feed the hungry, not only those who need food, but those who need a smile, a word of encouragement, a word of appreciation, especially during this time of quarantine during the pandemic. We're sent to clothe the naked, not only those without clothing, but those without self-confidence or self-esteem, or those who do not know that they are loved by God. We're sent to shelter the homeless, not only those without homes, but those without tenderness or affection, those without sympathy or understanding, those without love and acceptance. We're sent to free the oppressed, not just those who are bound unjustly, but the stranger and the foreigner, people we have biases and prejudices against, those who are treated unjustly by social institutions that we support, even if it's only by our indifference. And then as Isaiah prophesied, you will spring forth your righteousness before you. And then we will be people of the resurrection. And so this gospel is about recognizing Christ in ourselves and in everyone else. And in our reading today, and, and in fact in all the resurrection stories that we hear this week, no one recognizes Jesus immediately. It's only upon awareness and discernment that they recognize his presence. And so we need during this Easter season to remain aware, to remain reflective of our situations and of others that have been put into our lives. And as the world becomes ever more intimate, we need to recognize Jesus in the world and of being Christ for the world by our witness of love.
Dear friends, as we now heard the word of God, we now present to the Lord our many concerns. For leaders of the church, may God's wisdom flow in and through them in their witness to God's saving love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For areas of the world afflicted by violence, may God's hands raise up leaders who offer peaceful solutions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families facing conflict, may the Holy Spirit lead them in embracing understanding and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may we receive eyes of faith to recognize the face of Christ in others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in Christ, may they rise with him to eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Stephanie Gerlaine, for whom this Mass is offered, and for those silent intentions we lift up from our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. this bread to offer you, fruit to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands through the praise and glory of his name, through our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and his rising to life, all of life has arisen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the hymn of your glory. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, 
when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me, The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you have led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again as we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion, and so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, the religious, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the martyrs, and with all the saints who have praised you throughout the ages. We shall praise you and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. For the coming of the kingdom, we pray as Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith and courage of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, O oh Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a good day, everybody.